This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this lovely carbon fiber clad honey here is the Lenovo ThinkPad P1 Gen 4, which, and every generation we go through this confusion, is just about the same thing as the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 4 this time around. The difference is going to be with the P1, you have NVIDIA Quadro graphics options and ISV certifications to go along with it and Intel Xeon CPU options. Now this is a thin and light mobile workstation, relatively speaking, four pounds, 1.8 kilograms, the kind that won't hurt so much if you drop it on your foot, yet there's a lot of power here, more punch even than a Dell XPS 15 overall. And we're gonna look at it now. So just like the X1 Extreme, displays have improved here. In fact, we have a 16 inch display instead of 15.6, 16 by 10 aspect ratio gets us there. And you have a QHD display option of 400 nits and 4K plus with your choice of matte or touch screen options and that's 600 nits. And these are low blue light and wide gamut displays. So quite nice stuff here. Business oriented features like self-healing BIOSes, onboard a fingerprint scanner, optional Windows Hello IR camera because you do care about security. And no matter which tablet or laptop or phone you end up buying after watching one of our videos, it's important to keep them protected. And our sponsor, Trend Micro's premium security suite is there to protect up to 10 of your devices. Be it Windows or Mac OS or iOS or Android, they've got you covered. And one license covers 10 devices. So you and your whole family, which is pretty nice. So on any of these platforms, you get a password manager in addition to lightweight virus protection. And on your phone, there are handy things like rogue text message protection. You know, we all get these spammy text messages now with very iffy links. That's what I'm talking about there. And then there's actual monitoring your children kind of stuff going on. So make sure they don't visit dicey websites, that sort of thing. And on the PC, you also get protection against ransomware too, with secure folders, that sort of thing. And online shopping protection. Be sure to visit the link in the description to get yours. And now back to our video. Of course, it might not be super duper heavy or chonky or anything like that. Certainly look at it compared to the Lenovo ThinkPad P15, which is your traditional chonky mobile workstation, but it's pretty durable. We have a spill resistant keyboard, carbon fiber casing. If you go with the higher end 4K display options, you'll get this neat carbon fiber weave lid. Otherwise it's gonna be just matte black and the usual rugged design quality. Now, another interesting thing with this is uh, there's a wide gamut of video cards available here. So you can go from the lowly NVIDIA T1200 graphics up to NVIDIA RTX A series graphics, 2000, 3000, 4000, 5000, or NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 and 3080 graphics. If you're looking at the more powerful GPUs, you know anything that is above the A3000, or and for both of the RTX 3070 and 3080 GPUs there, you're looking at Max-Q level power because it's still pretty thin and pretty light. But if you do go for those more powerful graphics options, you get vapor chamber and cooling inside. So that's good because often you see thin and light mobile workstations that can't really live up to their potential because, well, cooling is a challenge. And here it's pretty well done. We'll see the CPU actually reach as high as 65 watts, which is pretty good considering these are 45 watt Intel H series 11th gen processors inside. There is an Intel Xeon option as well. So why 11th gen? Because we're waiting for the vPro CPUs to come out for 12th gen and these have vPro options. In fact, we have a Core i7 vPro inside. You can also get a Core i9 if you want. We have two RAM slots here at DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM. So 64 gigs would be your max. And SSDs, these are PCIe Gen 4 fast SSDs, nice that. And one or two M.2 slots, depending. If you get the vapor chamber cooler with the more powerful GPUs, there's not enough room for a second SSD slot or for the optional 4G and 5G WAN cellular modem options. So keep that in mind when you're configuring it. Pricing, this is a business laptop and a mobile workstation. It ain't gonna be cheap, no kidding. So it starts around 1900 with a i7 QHD display and the NVIDIA T1200 graphics, which is almost like, why did you bother level of graphics in my opinion? And of course it's switchable with Intel UHD graphics. If you're looking at about $2,500, you can get a fairly compelling config with a Core i7, a QHD display, and that QHD display is no slouch, and an RTX 3070. Neat. 
it's not, you know, primarily a gaming laptop. It's not at all. It's supposed to be a gaming laptop, but obviously with this much graphics power and some pretty good cooling inside, you can also play some games on it, but it is designed more for those of you who are doing 3D design work, video editing at a fairly serious professional level, that sort of thing, and it can handle it. So how's the cooling then? We have the vapor chamber model with a 3070 and a Core i7 inside. And you will hear the fans, you know, he's got two fans. And, you know, if you're just doing productivity work or streaming video, you really won't hear the fans much. They'll pop on occasionally, but when they do pop on, when you're doing heavier work, like say Adobe Premiere or Blender or something like that, you'll hear them mm, kind of a, a more, slightly more mellow version of gaming laptop, but you'll, you'll notice them. But given the performance and the thinness, it's pretty fair. But if you're hoping for that silent option, you're not going to get it with this level of horsepower and this level of thinness, certainly. CPU temperatures on this are pretty good in part because they are thermally limited. So, you know, the machine says, oh, you're getting a little too hot, so it'll throttle back and then come back. But overall performance on this is pretty solid. We're not seeing horrible throttling. Like I said, you can hit 60 to 65 watts. And in benchmarks, we saw the processor go up to 94, 95 degrees centigrade. So it's not exactly being overly conservative with that throttling. But if it has to, it will drop back. The casing, thanks to the vapor chamber, it does spread the heat more evenly, but the casing all around, if you're doing productivity work, it'll be warm, probably what I would call pleasantly warm, because I'm always a little chilly. Uh, but if you're pushing it hard, or if you are doing something like playing games, it'll get quite toasty, especially on the whole, pretty much the whole bottom surface of it, and a little bit in the keyboard deck area. I mean, it's not going to burn you or something like that, or endanger your fertility if you're a man, but, you know, yeah, a little toasty there. The webcam on this, you can get an optional Windows Hello IR camera, by the way. Either way, you get a privacy shutter on physical slider switch to cover the webcam should you need to do so. It's 1080p. It's a little better than your average, well, 720p webcam. It's still not amazing, but in this day and age when we're still doing a lot of video conferencing, it helps to have a little extra something there. You get your usual white backlit and lovely ThinkPad keyboard, not as thick as the key travel from days of old, but a very tactile and pleasing keyboard and a perfectly usable trackpad with the usual eraser stick style pointer for those of you who are still fond of that sort of thing. To speak just a little bit more about the display, because I want to, because it's really nice, we have the 4K Plus, the UHD Plus display, which is 3840 by 2400 resolution, a little taller than usual because it's that 16 by 10 aspect ratio. It's IPS. All the display options are IPS. Very nice display. Other than the fact that it surely is 600 nits, the color gamut in this is great. 100% of Adobe RGB coverage. Yes, thank you. I'll take that. For those of you who are doing work for print proofing where you actually need that wide gamut display or for film work, that sort of thing, that's loveliness to have. Contrast is pretty decent on this. Black level is not super great, but for a 600 nit display, we can't ask for everything. And I think most people are not going to be driving this to 600 nits indoors because it literally sears your eyes, despite the fact that it is certified low blue light. And the QHD option is 400 nits, which still isn't bad and should be a nice display as well. And then there's a touchscreen option also for the 4K, but not for the QHD model, for those of you who want that. And of course, that'll be a glossier finish, so you'll have some reflections to deal with there. Ports on this are decent. I mean, it is a thin and light mobile workstation, so there's not room for that many. It's, it's okay. You get two Thunderbolt 4, which is wonderful. You get two USB-A ports, 3.2 Gen 1, an HDMI 2.1 port, headphone jack, and a full-size SD card slot. If you do go with the 4G, 5G option and the lesser power GPUs that don't need that vapor chamber, then you'll have a nano SIM card slot as well. So, it's okay, and Thunderball gives you a lot of versatility, including plugging in additional monitors and all that sort of thing via DisplayPort to USB-C or what have you there. So that's fine. Battery in this is 90 watt hour. That's a pretty beefy battery, right? And you'll either get our 230 watt charger, which is styling and compact, but very dense, which means heavy, or a 170 watt charger if you go with one of the lower end GPUs. So despite the 90 watt hour battery, which sounds pretty good, you have very bright displays on board. You have a lot of performance inside. And I didn't see particularly fantastic run times with our 4K model, which of course 4K, yes, is going to use a lot of power. So I run the brightness at 200 nits and do real world pro productivity and streaming tests, a little bit of Photoshop thrown in for your light productivity workload, because if you're doing anything heavier than that, you're probably going to be plugging it in for maximum performance anyway. And I was getting about six and a half hours. Mm, could be worse. Certainly we wish it could be even better, but you know, it's, it's not unusual for this class of machine, those sort of run times with a 
bright 4K display on board. To get inside, as we'd expect for a business laptop, very easy. Phillips head screws that are captive, unscrew them and lift. Start from the back, that makes it easier. Lots of ventilation down here, that's a good thing to see. It also vents out the rear behind the hinge area. And here are the internals and very big vapor chamber going on here. The two cooling fans, obviously. This is the M.2 PCIe Gen 4 SSD. Nice benchmark speeds for ours. And the two RAM slots are here in different colored covers. We have the silver Mylar here for one slot, and we have some black thermal tape for here. And this is the Intel AX210 Wi-Fi 6E card with Bluetooth 5.2, and that is soldered on, so you won't be upgrading or changing that later, but happily it's a good enough card. Our 90 watt hour battery here, pretty compact given the capacity of it, and the speaker drivers for the up-firing speakers that surround the keyboard, which sound pretty good, honestly, especially for a business laptop. And that's about all you can see and do inside here. So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad P1 Gen 4, not to be confused or maybe to be confused with the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 4 because they're almost the same laptop, except for you have some, like I said, NVIDIA, essentially Quadro called them options, the A series of GPUs for those of you who need that and the ISV certifications that go along with it. Uh, it's a fantastic mobile workstation and it's very portable. Uh, like I said, I kind of love this carbon fiber weave on the lid, but anyway, between the two of these, which one you pick really depends on whether you want the A series graphics from NVIDIA or you're happy with the RTX GeForce models of GPUs instead. And if you like this vapor chamber cooling business going on, which is a decent sell in itself. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.